is Kaylin proposing to Dean? Why did Tammy call out Bachelor producers? Tyler C is the most single he's ever been. Hey guys, and welcome to another Shared News. We are here to break down the biggest Bachelor Nation headlines of the week. But before we get into all of the Bachelor tea, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you have not already so you never miss out on any Bachelor Nation news. As always, I'm your host, Zachary Reality, joined by Allison Van Dam. Allison, happy Friday. I know you're in New York, so let everyone know how are you doing today and are you ready to get into all the tea? I'm good. I'm so excited that we get to talk about Bachelor, even though we're not currently in a Bachelor or Bachelorette season. Life is good. I'm in New York. Um, I like coming here because it's so different than LA, but I think I'm I'm ready to come back and join you in the land of palm trees and oceans. Yeah. So you're not planning on moving to New York? No, no, I'm not. Okay. Just checking because we want to make sure we keep you in the California state. So we're all good here. And have you ran into any Bachelor Nation stars in New York? Because we know they're all everywhere in the big city. I haven't, but it's not the weekend yet. So I'll keep my eye out when I'm going Ooh. out tonight and tomorrow. And I'll let you know. I'll let you know what the tea is. Okay, perfect. We'll report back next week. Now we got to get into all of the Bachelor headlines, starting with Kaylin and Dean from Bachelor in Paradise. Now, Kaylin has openly discussed wanting to propose to Dean. They left the show together in season five, and they've been dating the last three years. Super happy, as shown on their social medias. They're always traveling, doing lots of things together. But Dean has always been hesitant about getting married. He's a bit more of a nomad. We can't forget he used to live in a van. Kaylin even lived in the van with him for a couple of months after Paradise. But Kaylin has always been super patient with him because she loves him, but she's always wanted marriage and babies as well. Kaylin says, traditionally, he would propose to me, but that means it'd be an experience he doesn't get. It would be a day that gets catered to him and he get that special moment where he's really thought of. So I love the idea of planning a special moment that's all about him. We're in a partnership we both should be proposed to. Allison, is this the new modern day thing? Should girls propose to guys and guys propose to girls? Or is Kaylin just really trying to tie him down? You know, I feel like it's kind of whoever wants to pop the question should feel enabled to do so. I mean, it's funny because we covered the ultimatum so much when that came out on Netflix. And those were various couples of Sometimes the guy really wanted to get married, but also sometimes the girl really wanted to get married. Um, my biggest question is, if the girl proposes to the guy in like a heterosexual situation, does the guy yeah. wear an engagement ring? Because typically the girl has an engagement ring, but the guy doesn't have a ring until it's his wedding band. So maybe they're both going to have engagement rings. That's my first question of, does Kaylin get an engagement ring? Because I feel like she would want one. Yeah, I mean, what Kaylin is saying is that she wants to propose to Dean but then she's also like expecting Dean to propose to her as well. And it doesn't seem like Dean is planning on doing that or wants to do that. I feel like if it was Dean's way, they would never get engaged. So I feel like this is Kaylin's way of saying, I'm going to propose to you so we can get the ball rolling. And I like that you brought the ultimatum up because I'm pretty sure they just did a podcast with a few of the ultimatum people. And Dean was saying that Kaylin needs to bring her on the ultimatum if she wants to get engaged because Dean just doesn't seem up for it. Yeah, I mean, like you said, he is such a nomad. And I'm wondering also, you know, they had a dog together. They bought a house together in Las Vegas. They're doing all these big kind of steps that maybe would be associated with marriage. So maybe Kaylin's interpreting that as, oh, we're building up to marriage. But maybe in Dean's mind, he's like, wait, we've already checked all these boxes. We don't need, you know, rings to prove how much we love each other or how much we are committed to each other. So I think it's just two different personalities and maybe two different views on marriage itself. Yeah. And I think that's awesome that they have their own beliefs. And I do think they can, you know, have kids and get a house and they don't have to get married. You know, it's 2022. You can do whatever you want. But if that is something that Kaylin truly wants out of life, then I mean, I think that they are going to have to decide that sooner rather than later. And maybe she will have to give him an ultimatum because if they want different things out of life, it's better to kind of sort those things out now than deal with it five years down the road. You know, in a lot of um, LGBTQ relationships, we see both partners, you know, propose to each other because they both want, you know, that special moment. We don't really see that ever in heterosexual relationships. So I think it's kind of an interesting point. And I'm all here for it if they're both going to propose to each other. But I also think it's important that if Dean does propose to Kaylin, it's because he really wants to and not because he's being forced to and he's being forced to kind of keep her. 
So I guess we'll have to see what plays out. Have you kept up with their relationship a lot? Like, what do you think is going to end up happening? You know, I'm not the most up to date with them. I don't follow either of them on social media. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we see like a gorgeous, you know, photo or video of them, you know, on a cliff or a bluff somewhere with a beautiful proposal. I feel like they do all these like artsy photos and they're always on the move and they're always traveling. Maybe they'll do a little like, maybe their honeymoon will be on the road in the van. I wouldn't be shocked if eventually Dean comes around to it. I think he's very, very much in love with Kaylin. And if that's something that she really sees for herself and is like a non-negotiable for her, I could see them, you know, maybe coming to an agreement and him saying, you know, babe, this is, you know, a big deal for you. I will come around to it and pop the question. Yeah, I think he's going to end up doing it. They've been together like three, maybe three and a half years. I mean, there's plenty of couples that date for five years or seven years before an engagement. So Kaylin, just just keep waiting. He'll come around eventually. At least that's what I think. Let's move on to our next story. Tyler Cameron is more single than he's ever been. Tyler has definitely been through a lot after his time on The Bachelorette. He was ready to propose to Hannah Brown, who rejected him and got engaged to Jed instead. And then when Hannah tried to get back with Tyler after the show, it was too late because Tyler has moved on with Gigi Hadid. We read a little bit about this and the behind the scenes in Hannah Brown's book, and she kind of described Tyler a little bit as an F boy. But Tyler has kind of been doing his own thing, and he's dated a few models since the show and most recently appeared on Fox's show Dirty Dancing. And he was also recently spotted kissing Kristen Cavallari in the desert on the set of her new jewelry campaign, but said there was nothing to that and they're just friends. Tyler Moe's recently went on the Ellen DeGeneres show, revealed he is the most single he has ever been. Is this Tyler's pledge? Is he finally ready to be the next Bachelor? No, he is not going to be the next Bachelor. I think Tyler is so above the franchise at this point. Like, if anything, he has more to lose by being the bachelor you know that's a lot of like in-depth moments interviews watching him break the hearts of women i think he got such a great edit on hannah brown season he went on to date Gigi. we've seen him in modeling campaigns he was on snl with kim kardashian like he is on such a different level and i think he's one of the few people from bachelor nation that has launched himself into other pop culture other shows like he is kind of a household name at this point. So if I was, you know, his PR team or his management team, I would be like, boy, we, we got to go a different alley because we can't go back. We can only go forward. So no, I don't think we will ever see Tyler as our bachelor. Yeah, it's just interesting how he says he's the most single he's ever been. Like, what does that mean? Is he working on himself? Is he focusing on himself? Does he have things that he's planning on doing? Or is this his way to say, slide in my DMs right now, I am single, I am available, I want a relationship. I mean, what do we think it is? Because he's pushing 30, not that that really matters, but I mean, it is the next stage of life. So, I mean, I think it's time for him to find a girl that he can settle down with, preferably not from Bachelor Nation. Do you have any other reality stars you would like to see him with or what he could possibly look good with another girl? Yeah, I'm trying to think because I feel like he needs someone who is equally as motivated. You know, clearly he's made a career for himself. And I think that's probably why he and Gigi got along well is because they're both very hardworking. They're dedicated to their work. So we'd have to find him someone who, you know, has her own career, is very dedicated to that. And then they can kind of have that power couple dynamic. And I agree with you. It shouldn't be someone in Bachelor Nation. I think they need to have two different experiences. Um, I'm trying to think of someone on the top of my head. You, you know, way more reality people than I do, but I'm trying to think of celebrities that are hardworking and could be a good pair for him. I would like to see him with Emma Herman from Selling Sunset. We know she's single. She recently said Ben Affleck was sliding into her DMs and with Selling Sunset back streaming, I think they could be a really hot couple. Oh, very much so. They could be taking her private jets with her <laughs> dog, eating empanadas, living their best life. Yeah, we're making it happen. We love a good crossover. Let's move on to our next story. Marissa Gunn is denying any shade thrown at Riley. So after an appearance on the Almost Famous podcast, Marissa is shedding some light on her breakup with Riley. We saw them get engaged on Bachelor in Paradise last summer, and everyone thought that they would be the top couple to make it down the aisle. 
However, things did not work out. After the show, Marissa moved in with Riley in New York, and they really tried to make things work. Things were going well for a couple months. They met each other's family, but they both knew it was over before it was really over. So that's why there was so much back and forth in the media and so much speculation, deleting pictures, the tweets. It's because they really were trying to make it work, but did not want to officially pull the plug. Marissa only had nice things to say about Riley, even though some of her friends threw a little bit of shade towards him on social media. Deandra and Demi were two of the girls to throw a little shade and have Marissa's back. However, Marissa said no shade was thrown. She was being kind of coy. She did say sometimes people are different off the show than they are off the show without mentioning any names or on the show, not off the show. And she also said she's open to going to paradise this summer. So. What do we make of this? Is she trying to like, you know, play it cool? Is she trying to go back on the beach? Would Riley go back on the beach? How do you make all this? I mean, I'm not surprised that she tried to keep, you know, a more neutral, friendly tone, especially on social media, because if they were really trying to make it work, that's got to be devastating if it didn't work out. So if I was going through something kind of gut wrenching in my personal life, I wouldn't necessarily want any comments or feedback from people online. And you know, the second that she, you know, made a statement or took a stand, you're going to have a mixed bag of comments. You're going to have people who are on team Marissa. You're going to have people who are on team Riley who never really knew the situation. And I think that would be really hard to hear and frustrating to see on your own social media page. So I think it's smart of her to just kind of try and avoid it. And if she wants to go back, back on the beach, I think she should go back on the beach. I don't know if they should both go. We kind of saw that with Kendall and Joe this past season. It always kind of gets messy if you're there with your ex who you met on the beach and you're back at the spots where you went on dates and you're watching them interact with other people. We kind of, again, saw this in the ultimatum where you can kind of flag it out of the corner of your eye of someone you knew and had been intimate with is now matching with other people. So I think... If producers are smart and if Marissa and Riley are smart, they're going to just have one of them or none of them go. I think if both of them go, it's going to be way, way too messy. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting the impression that Marissa is going. And word on the street is she was invited to go. And she said she was open to dating again. She already went on a date. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see her there. But I don't think it will work out for her if she goes back. I feel like she just had an engagement last year. That's a lot of baggage going into another paradise a year later. So I just don't know how it will pan out for her. But I'm expecting to see her there. And I mean, I think she was trying to play it coy. She definitely didn't say anything bad. But there was a little bit of shade thrown. So I do feel like there's more to the story with the Marissa and Riley breakup. However, I do feel like this podcast actually shed a lot of light. So I feel like I have more of an understanding better late than never, Marissa, but I do feel like I have more of an understanding on the breakup. Um, let's move on to Tammy Lee. Now she is calling out Bachelor producers. She has been on her podcast tour after her contract from the franchise has finally been lifted and she's ready to address those viral Instagram stories she made about leaving the franchise and Tammy believes that the producers play favorites. She believes that everyone who has a podcast was protected on the beach and that if you're not one of their favorites, then they will not help you. They will not throw you a bone and they have no, you know, qualms about trying to make you look good if you're not one of the favorites. She also shared she had something in the works with the franchise for a really long time, but they let her on and cut it short without an explanation. So what do we think Tammy is talking about? Was she going to be the first Asian bachelorette? Was she going to be the bar back or bartender in paradise? And do we feel like Tammy is bitter or is she just spitting facts? I feel like there might be a tinge of bitterness there. You know, if she did feel led on and if they did, you know, pull the rug out from under her, now is her time to speak out. Maybe she's been kind of harboring these feelings towards producers, towards the franchise. I mean, you, you could be right. She could have been the bachelorette. Maybe they were going to give her her own podcast or like another way to have an outlet. Maybe they took that away or, you know, gave the hosting gig to someone else. We've watched them kind of rotate between bachelorettes, between, you know, especially the women hosting these various podcasts. It really is constantly changing. Um, so yeah, I definitely think there's a chance that maybe they thought she'd be a great option. Then someone else came forward that was even better, but I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if they did kind of give favor and protect people who worked for the franchise, who had podcasts under bachelor nation on the beach, because they they're smart enough to know that if people get a really bad edit on the beach, people aren't really going to be invested in them. And then they're not going to listen to the podcast and the bachelor franchise only yeah. benefits 
financially and socially from having people looking at all their various channels. So I think it makes sense that they're going to give preference and screen time and good edits to the people that they know are turning over money and views for them in different outlets. I mean, I think Tammy's spitting facts. I mean, Becca, Grocery Store, Joe, Natasha, they were protected. They have the best, you know, edits and reputations in Bachelor Nation for a reason. And I mean, there's so much footage that gets filmed every day in Paradise. They're only going to pick and choose what moments they want to show to kind of fit these character archetypes. So I do think that Tammy has valid points here. And it's kind of nice that she's able to shed some light on what really happened because her contract is up. There's things she's never going to be allowed to say. Like she never told us what this thing was she was working on with the franchise. But it is nice that she's able to shed some light. And I mean, listen, I think we've all heard from a lot of Bachelor, you know, villains and a lot of Bachelor people who didn't get the best edit that the producers are toxic and that there is a lot of manipulation and editing going down behind the scenes. So good for Tammy for letting it all out. Not sure at what expense because... You know, she's probably never going to be welcomed back into the franchise if she ever wanted to go back on the show. But good for her. I'm sure she kind of had to set some things free. And she also touched a little bit about Thomas and Becca, because we know that she was dating Thomas before Becca came into the mix. And she says that she let Thomas go on the date with Becca. She gave him permission because Thomas wouldn't have done it if if he didn't get the permission from Tammy. And Becca actually suddenly responded to that shade on her podcast, Bachelor Happy Hour, this week and said, Thomas is a grown man and he does what he wants. And, um, you know, she kind of kept it like that. She kind of made it seem like it, Tammy didn't know what she was talking about. Now, Tammy did say that her and, um, you know, Thomas are really cute together, but that it has nothing to do with Tammy giving the permission to Becca and Thomas. And Thomas also shared on the Clickbait Nation podcast that he is ready to propose to Becca sometime this year, possibly in the summer. What do we think about all of this mess? I mean, Tammy's whole comment about Thomas and Becca, if that didn't really happen and if Thomas didn't get her permission, that to me strikes me as, you know, Tammy maybe trying to get some of her power back on this situation. It would be, you know, a little hurtful if the person you were really interested in found an amazing connection with someone else. They're still together. They're talking about getting engaged. So maybe that was her way of kind of just saying like, oh, kudos to me. I'm kind of responsible for making this happen. And then in terms of Thomas proposing to Becca, I know if he mentioned the summer, everyone's thoughts go to paradise maybe of like, oh, that's where they met. But Thomas has also said that he didn't want it to be similar to Becca's other proposals in Bachelor Nation. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was very intimate, maybe in Minnesota, like with her family, something very small, and then they share a photo online. I don't think it's going to be some big production because I don't think that's what either of them really wants at this point. But do you think that he could possibly propose to her at The Bachelor Live on stage on the like finale night? Because we just saw it happen with Tia. Yeah, I don't know if he'd want to like steal from Tia's playbook, though. I think he'd want to do his own thing. And honestly, if I got proposed to the same way that someone else did only a matter of weeks later, I'd be like, okay, wow, really creative. Glad to know you put a lot of effort into that. So I hope for Becca's sake, he doesn't. That's fair. That's fair. Now, we do have some Bachelor in Paradise couples that are dating that might be getting engaged soon. Abigail and Noah, Chris and Elena, Becca and Thomas, and of course, Clayton and Susie. Well, they're engaged or they're not engaged yet. So who do we think is going to be the next to get engaged? I don't think it's going to be Clayton and Susie. I think they're going to figure out what it's like to live with each other. I think they're going to take it very slow because they're going to be very careful about it. I wouldn't be shocked if it's Noah and Abigail. I think they've just kind of had this like very peaceful, you know, low maintenance love that they share what they want to share. Um, But they've moved in together. They seem very happy together in Huntington Beach. So I wouldn't be shocked if it's them. Chris and Elena, I feel like we kind of forgot about them. And then they recently popped up when they were talking about their experience on Bachelor in Paradise, their fellow castmates, producers, all of that. And they kind of had some negative stuff to say. So maybe if they're coming back out of the woodwork, it's time for an engagement. But my hope is that it's Noah and Abigail because I think they're so, so cute. Yeah, they are really cute. I don't know if it's going to be them. I kind of think Becca and Thomas are like the oldest out of the bunch. It seems like a lot of the other couples are more mid to late 20s where Becca and Thomas are like early 30s. So I think Becca and Thomas are going to be next. And I think it will probably happen this summer, but probably not on the beach. Let's move on to our last story of the day. Clayton and Susie have completed their road trip. 
So after all of the TikTok drama, we cannot forget Clayton and Susie were able to reconnect and prove that they are stronger than ever. They moved from Arizona to Virginia. So Susie met up with Clayton in Arizona. They did the road trip across the country. They stopped in Utah, Colorado. They made it to Missouri to see Clayton's family and kind of get that hometown visit. Then they stopped in Nashville. They saw Connor the cat. And then they stopped in Charlotte and saw Hunter. Seems like they had a really fun road trip. It kind of happened in like a week. It seemed a little too quick for a road trip if you wanted to kind of see everywhere. But they were able to see a lot of their Bachelor Nation faves and, of course, Clayton's family. So, Allison, I mean, is this inspiring you to go on a road trip soon? And where would you want to stop? How would your road trip be different than Clayton and Susie's? I, I'm with you. I thought it went surprisingly fast. Um, I thought this was going to be, you know, weeks and weeks and suddenly they're already <laughs> done with the road trip. So it went very, very quickly because I remember mm. even, you know, I don't know if it was Clayton or Susie posting on their story, like, we want to work out on our journeys. So, like, let us know if you have a gym we can stop by and like listed a bunch of cities. If I was only on a road trip for like seven days, I'm not sure I would have carved out that much time to work out. I would have just worked out when I got there. But good for them for being fit and prioritizing that. Um, I don't know where I'd want to go on a road trip. I feel like maybe up and down the West coast, because I love driving along water. If you get too far into the middle of the country, everything kind of looks the same. So I've driven through the entire state of South Dakota before, and it's very dull. So I don't need to do that again, but maybe somewhere on the West coast. I think that could be really pretty, but you have to have the right snacks. You got to have the right music, the right people. It, there's a lot of crucial elements to a road trip. I think. Yeah. I've always wanted to do like an RV road trip. Like two months or maybe a month because two is a lot or maybe three weeks um like all the way across the country from like maine to california and do like the entire thing so i was really like hoping to see some of this like fun content from their road trip because i wanted to live through them and it just it just went too fast it was just a really quick road trip but now they're back in Virginia Beach, and I guess they're moving in together. Clayton's going to be moving into Susie's place. You know, her lease actually expires in a few months in September. So then I think then they'll be able to decide if they want to get a new place together or if they want to move out of Virginia Beach. Not really sure that they know what their next steps are. But do we think they're in it for the long haul? Because this is the first time they're going to be living together starting now, even though they got, they left, they kind of left the show together like four or five months ago. I think they definitely are. And even from what they've said, you know, in interviews while on the road trip about all the TikTok drama, like Susie has said, you know, this has actually strengthened our relationship. We're having even deeper conversations. And she was working in California and he was in Arizona with his brother and then everything came out and they just did a quick, you know, five minute FaceTime in between her filming a wedding in California. So it's like they keep making it a priority to discuss things, to have open communication, to spend as much time with each other as they can, to integrate each other into their lives. So they're putting in the legwork of making this work despite the season ending in kind of a weird way. So uh, just based on their effort, I really hope they can at least be together for a couple of years because they're really, really mm -hmm. trying and I give them a lot of credit for that. Yeah, absolutely. And we're excited to follow along their journey as they're our most recent Bachelor couple. Now, The Bachelorette, you know, there hasn't been a lot of spoilers online because they have been on the cruise ship. So they haven't really been seen as much in public, so we don't really know what's going on, but I did hear that they are getting ready to do hometown. So they're definitely on the last couple of weeks of their season, and we know The Bachelorette will return to ABC July 11th. How do we think the season ended up going on this cruise ship, hopping around different European cities? Oh my gosh, I think it's going to be amazing. Because again, this is going to be a season we've never seen before. We've never had two bachelorettes doing an, an entire season together. And I honestly just hope that they have a friendship throughout it all. I hope Rachel and Gabby never have the opportunity to turn on each other. I hope no guys come between them. I hope no guys want them to pick. Like, I just hope there's none of that kind of catty drama and they can just focus on finding love, support each other, and truly just like kick all the, the nonsense to the curb. Yes, and we cannot wait to see how it all goes down. Well, those are our biggest Bachelor Nation news stories of the week. So be sure to comment down below your thoughts and your opinions on all of the Bachelor Nation hottest news. And before you guys go, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you never miss out on any future videos. As always, I'm your host, Zachary Reality, joined by the lovely Allison Van Dam. 
Our social handles are on the screen right now if you guys want to pop over to our Instagrams and say hello. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye.